Boss Runbacks. Ever since releasing my top 10 worst boss runbacks video, it seems I just can't get away from them. The comment section for that video was absolutely tremendous and filled with several people putting through many thought-provoking arguments, many actually in favour of the existence of boss runbacks. These got me really thinking a lot about them, even more so than usual. While they're definitely a key component of this franchise, especially in the earlier games, I want to ask these questions today. Are boss runbacks a good thing? Are there examples where having a boss runback really works in the boss's favour? The way I want to tackle this is by looking at many of the common arguments for them and outline whether I agree or disagree. I'll of course be diving into some of the examples raised in the comments section as well as other parts of the internet. Of course, as I hope you know, I love to hear your thoughts so please feel free to share in the comments below as well as hitting the like button and subscribing if you like the random Souls content I'm putting out while I'm pretending I know what I'm talking about. So, here's a super common argument in favour. Runbacks add tension to the boss fight because of knowing you'll have to do it again if you die to the boss. So I think this one is accurate. It does add tension, that's for sure. It serves as a punishment if you don't defeat the boss. But the punishment here is making you run through nearly two minutes of tedium, potentially nearly dying depending on what the boss is. But let me ask this, isn't it possible to achieve this feeling in a different and more exciting way? The implication here is often that without the boss run back, being able to just try the boss multiple times straight away after death would lack any tension. So what about making the boss fight longer and tougher instead? Let me use Sword Saint Ishin as an example. He has a checkpoint right next to him but he has four phases and it is a very long fight. Whenever I got to the fourth phase during my first playthrough of Sekiro, it was one of the most tense moments I've ever had in any video game. Same with a lot of the Sekiro bosses actually. Here it feels like the first phase with Genichiro is used instead of a boss runback. You can say the same for Slave Knight Gales or Sister Freed's first phases as well. It's still a punishment of having to do the same thing again because you failed, but here you're immersed in a deep combat experience instead of having to try and dodge through a bunch of enemies. Which sounds more enjoyable to you? Personally, it's the former for me, but everyone's different. Another argument that I saw for boss runbacks was Having enemies to farm on the way to the boss is a great opportunity to level up and get stronger. So yes, farming enemies to level up before a boss is a classic RPG tactic. But would this be any different if you had the checkpoint next to the boss and the enemies behind you instead of in front? See this diagram right here in front of you. You could simply go backwards and farm the enemies. The position of the checkpoint is kind of irrelevant here. Also, I'd argue that leveling up often makes a fairly minimal difference unless there was a specific weapon you needed the stats to wield. Usually, the main reason people die to these bosses is because of not knowing their moveset as opposed to being underleveled. But regardless, you could still farm these enemies regardless of where the bonfire is. The only important thing here is that the enemies are in the vicinity of the checkpoint which will make them respawn and thus you can continue to farm them. Next up. All video games in the 80s and early 90s had brutal boss runbacks and they were way worse than this. Checkpoints didn't exist in my day. So this is absolutely true, but as we've seen time and time again these days, just because something was worse 40 to 50 years ago doesn't mean we shouldn't challenge things we don't like now. Standards in gaming have changed and this is part of how games end up constantly improving as the years go on. It's kind of like if a game came out with terrible camera controls and somebody said, well, the early 3D games on the N64 had shocking camera controls, so stop complaining, just deal with it. Anyway, sorry, bit of a diatribe there, but anyway, I thought it was important to touch upon. Back then, in the 80s and 90s, video games were designed to purposefully be extremely unforgiving so that people would pump coins into them in arcades. Technology has come a long way since then, and the home gaming market has meant developers want to give people a more satisfying gaming experience where you don't have to repeat the same thing over and over and over. People, especially adults, and I can tell you this from experience, have limited time with work and family commitments, and you'll end up pushing people to not want to buy your games if you don't respect this to some degree. Last one. Runbacks prevent the player from just making lots of mindless attempts at the boss and force you to have time to think about your strategy. So, I sort of see this one, but I, I think it's pretty subjective. Personally, if I'm struggling with a boss, I do stop and think, but it's usually at the bonfire nearby or whatever the checkpoint is, whether it's close to the boss or not. Having a runback wouldn't make any difference to me personally, because while I'm doing the runback, 
all I'm thinking about is dodging the enemies and not getting hit as opposed to actually fighting the boss. I could see that some players might do this if they had a checkpoint right next to the fog gate, but I could also see those same players mindlessly dashing through the runback without necessarily considering a new strategy. I think it's kind of hard to say that the runback definitely facilitates this, as each person's experience will be very different. So, we've covered quite a few of the key arguments promoting runbacks here, but I want to take a look at my other question. Do I think a boss runback can ever be good? Do I think there can be situations where it actually adds to the boss fight by having the runback? So, for me personally, as, as you probably know from listening to me speak on these videos, I don't like boss runbacks for the most part, but I think there are some examples where it can work in the boss's favour if it's a runback for a not too difficult boss. Demon Souls actually I think has a couple of good examples of this. The ones that spring to my mind immediately are Leechmonger and Adjudicator. If these were hard bosses, then they would probably have been in the top 5 of my boss runbacks video. But because Leechmonger and Adjudicator are kind of easy, but still with a little bit of challenge, this works in adding some additional tension to what would otherwise be underwhelming bosses. This was actually the reason why I didn't include these two in my worst bosses list, because I do think they have some value as a result of these runbacks. Another example that springs to my mind is the Taurus Demon in Dark Souls 1. Now he actually has something which I think works well in conjunction with a boss runback, which is that he doesn't instantly attack you when you get through the fog gate. You have a chance to stand there in a moment of reprieve after the runback and assess your surroundings, think about what you're going to do, and if you're like me, you may just look around to find that ladder. You can climb up there, kill those archers, and of course then you can figure out that you can do a plunging attack on him. This was a great bit of game design in my view, and I probably wouldn't have found this had there not been a bus runback and I could just run right into the boss gate. So here, I really think actually it does add something by having a boss run back for Taurus Demon. Of course, the problem is there are a lot of boss run backs where they have a super difficult boss at the end. Dark Souls 2, as we know, is the worst offender with stuff like Ludens Allen, Blue Smelter Demon and Sir Alon, which all have horrendously brutal run backs and these are all three very difficult bosses. You can also look to a lesser degree at False King Alunt in Demon Souls and Four Kings and Manus in Dark Souls 1, and there's a few more. In my view, there's absolutely no need for any of these boss runbacks to exist, and genuinely, I don't think they add anything to these bosses apart from frustration and wasted time. I'm glad most of them are being phased out now in the newer games in terms of more complex and challenging boss design instead, but I wouldn't mind if they still included a few with tough runbacks but easier bosses at the end, as I think this is the best way that they work. In my mind, they can have some value, if done right. So what do you think? Do you agree with my points? Maybe you have some other arguments for boss runbacks that I haven't thought of. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below as always. Thanks for listening and hope you find it interesting and not too long and rambly. If you did, please smash that subscribe button for more content. Have a good one and see you next time. Thank you.